All right, folks, it looks like this is real. We're going to be talking about a new and completely surprising long-term side effect post-mRNA vaccinations only. And third paper came out showing that these unusual and rare IgG4 antibodies are being observed in individuals who received mRNA vaccines. This is now a third peer review publication, so it starts to look real. We've done multiple videos on this topic, including discussing the previous two papers. We also talked about why this might be happening. We talked about where else this might have been observed. And most importantly, we also made a video on how the situation could be potentially remedied because this seems real. This could be an important thing to start checking out. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashek of Merogenomics. Let's get started. Let's review this third, third uh, publication from researchers from a couple universities in Budapest. So what did these authors... Well, actually, first of all, let's talk about IgG antibodies. There's multiple different types of antibodies. IgG is just one type, the most common type. And this can be divided into four categories. IgG3, IgG1, IgG2, and IgG4. Why did I mention them in this type of order? Because that's how they are observed or positioned genetically. So when, when cells are producing antibodies, they will always start with the first set, which is IgG3, and they have to be switched genetically to produce additional subtype and there is no way back it's a one-way street it seems okay so what that means is basically that you always have most IgG3 but they're short-lived the next one is IgG1 and then you will have much fewer IgG2 antibodies and IgG4 as a consequence because you need to switch through so many classes before you actually end up switching finally to IgG4 subclass it's the most rare antibody that we have in our bodies and it will constitute at most just few percent of all of the antibodies you might have at any given time all right so why do we see this switch to to see the switch to IgG4 it's typically if you have a parasitic infection or if the antigen is being presented to the immune system too much. In this case, of course, the antigen of interest is the spike protein. So we're talking about switching these antibodies in order to no longer recognize spike protein as a threat IgG4 antibodies, they build tolerance. Why this might not be a good thing. Okay, so what did these authors wanted to investigate? They had few questions they wanted to ask. First, they wanted to see, hey, what are the subtypes of, of IgG antibodies? Do we observe post-natural infection versus vaccination? Are there any different? Are they the same? Does the order of vaccination versus infection have an influence? That was another question they wanted to see, to answer. And, and the last one is, what would be the amounts of these different categories of uh, IgG antibodies? For sake of simplicity, simplicity, we will only <laughs> focus on IgG4. Okay, so what did they do? They had about 47 individuals who were mRNA vaccinated. That was both Moderna or Pfizer. And those 47 individuals, 47 individuals who were vaccinated, 36 of them were vaccinated with mRNA vaccines, both Moderna and Pfizer. And out of those 36, you could divide those individuals into three groups. Group number one were people who were vaccinated and never infected. So it's an easy one. Group number two, people who were vaccinated and then subsequently infected. And then finally, group number three, the interesting one, people who are in naturally infected first by the virus but then who subsequently took the vaccine, okay? So that, that was one group. They also had some people who received the DNA virus vector-based vaccines such as AstraZeneca and Sputnik. There's 11 individuals of those for comparison. And then finally, the last group were unvaccinated people, which is what made, made it interesting. 
And these unvaccinated people, they all were infected, so they all had COVID, and about 22 of them had mild COVID, so the very typical infection that most of us experience, and then about 56 individuals who had severe COVID and ended up being hospitalized because of that. Okay, so what did they do? They collected for the vaccinated individuals. Let's focus on that. They, for some of them, they collected blood a few weeks after their third shot, so a booster. So the, all these individuals had a full vaccination, so two shots, and then one more booster, okay? One more shot, which was the booster, so three shots in total. Few weeks after that sh third shot, some of them, they collected blood for all of them. They collected blood somewhere around, on average, 120 some days after that booster. So this allowed long-term comparison of what's happening with these, with these antibodies. For the unvaccinated individuals, those who were hospitalized, they took the blood samples somewhere 20 some days post hospitalization on average. And then for those who were not in hospital, I believe it was somewhere around 50 days on average po post infection. And they were comparing this, all of this. So what, what did they observe? Right away, the obvious answer is this. Those individuals who were mRNA vaccinated first did not see infection but were vaccinated at first, whether they had infection afterwards or not, they ended up with a high number of, of IgG4 antibodies. Those who were infected first, but then were mRNA vaccinated, they did produce some IgG4 antibodies as well, but it was substantially lower. So it seems like natural infection prior to being vaccinated with mRNA vaccines seem to give like protective effect against producing those IgG4 antibodies. And those who did not take mRNA vaccine, but rather had that adenoviral vector or DNA-based vaccine, such as AstraZeneca or Sputnik, they also did not seem to be producing a large quantity of IgG4 antibodies. So that's the first take-home message here, okay? So this seems like people who took the mRNA vaccines without prior infection, those are the people who end up producing IgG4 antibodies. Now they also were looking at, of course, remember I mentioned for some of them, for a bunch of these people, they had more than one blood sample. So they were able to see what happens to these IgG4 antibodies over time. Oh, prior to that, I can also tell you that in those individuals who were mRNA vaccinated, of those, all of those IgG4 antibodies that they were able to see, around 10% of those IgG4 antibodies were specific against spike protein, okay? So those were the, the, the amount. What were the other ones? The authors did not comment. It is possible that other ones also might have been against spike protein previously, but were no longer, no longer perhaps binding to the spike protein once different variants came out. But there was no commentary on that. Now, let's talk about what happens over time. To, to these antibodies. And uh, what happened is, okay, now let me remember, if you just took the vaccine and there was no infection, the IgG4 antibodies remain constant, okay? If you were infected first and then you took the mRNA vaccine, your IgG4 antibodies, these antibodies dropped over time. And the worst was those who took the mRNA vaccine first and then, and remember these are three shots, that was supposed to be three fingers, uh, three shots, and then were infected, those were the worst and their IgG4 antibodies were increasing and the authors provided interesting fun heat map so you can see the in that heat map, the redder the color, it indicates increase of a given antibody and blue color shows you decrease. And overall, all, all subclasses of antibodies, so this, these were IgG4 antibodies I was just met, talking about, those were all spikes protein specific antibodies. So the decrease, increase, that's against spike protein. But overall, 
all antibodies remain the same and that's where you can see no color change there. Uh, so overall antibody levels were remain the same, but the, the spike protein IgG4 antibodies were fluctuating. And um, so, and again, remember those who took the DNA-based viral vector-based vaccines, they're okay. And finally, one more comment, those I should mention, unvaccinated, they, didn't, they weren't even noticing any IgG4 antibodies. They were so low, they were basically undetectable. Okay, so whether the patients were hospitalized or not. So the take home message, this is very specific for individuals who were mRNA vaccinated. Okay, and more so if you were not infected first. The last thing they did, and I found this also pretty cool, they determined proportions of all of the IgG4s antibodies for all of these groups, how much of all of the IgG4 antibodies were spike protein specific, okay? So, <clears throat> in, um, of all of the, sorry, I did not say that correctly, of all of the spike protein specific antibodies, that's it, I knew it was something wrong, of all of the spike antibodies that each group of people were producing, spike protein specific antibodies, how much proportion of those were IgG4? And this is where, this is quite astonishing. So let's go with unvaccinated first. And they basically said that of all of the antibodies produced against spike protein by the unvaccinated individuals who got naturally infected, survived the infection, 1% of those who were IgG4 in the unhospitalized and 3% of those who, of all of the spike protein specific antibodies in hospitalized individuals unvaccinated, 3% were IgG4. Now let's contrast that. Individuals who were naturally infected first and then took the vaccine, about 9% of all of the antibodies against the spike protein were IgG4 subtype. In the DNA-based virus, virus vector vaccines, meaning, again, AstraZeneca and Sputnik, approximately 17% of all of the antibodies against spike protein were IgG4. Now, remember, the, the, there can be very different amounts in, in these groups, but basically we're talking about how many are IgG4 against spike protein. And mRNA-vaccinated individuals first who were vaccinated first, and then the, the, whether they were infected or, or not, subsequently, they had the highest number. And basically, we're talking about it was either 41 or nearly 46% 46 46 of all of the antibodies that these individuals were producing against spike protein were already IgG uh, subcategory, so huge amount. So there, there you go. Now, what's, what's interesting, about this, that this is completely in agreement with the previous two, two publications, both in terms of the protective effect of being infected first before being mRNA vac uh, vaccinated, also in terms of that this is mRNA vaccine specific and the other vaccines that were non-mRNA were not producing this. And now we also have a, this information on unvaccinated as well. What was also interesting is that the authors noted that if you were mRNA vaccinated, and then you were infected. If you were infected more than three months post your last booster, that's when you ended up producing even more IgG4. There was more substantial impact. And this is also in agreement with the previous, previous publications, all right? So the authors also mentioned, look, this is really rare to be observed. It's that there's very little lit literature on IgG4 antibodies after vaccination, they did bring up one interesting example that I did talk about in one of my past videos as well. It's available for free on Patreon account, on my Patreon account, so check it out. And this was basically IgG4 antibodies being seen in children who were vaccinated against pertussis toxin. And in that publication, the author showed that two types of vaccines were being used. One was called 
whole pertussis. Basically, we're talking about you take the pathogen and you inactivate it, and then there's a, a cellular pertussis. And that one is you only take a fragment of a specific antigen. So very similar to, say, mRNA vaccines, where you're only showing fragment of an antigen. You're not dealing with an entire virus pathogen. And those children who were vaccinated with acellular pertussis vaccine, they were showing IgG4 antibodies. But unvaccinated children who were infected, who had natural infection and had a whooping cough and survived, they did not produce those. And also children who were vaccinated with whole pertussis um, as well, and then had a breakthrough infection, they also were not producing those IgG4 antibodies. So very similar pattern to what we're, what we're seeing. The, why this is interesting is because the, and in those past studies, it was also observed that those kids that were not producing IgG4 antibodies, they had specific type of immunological reactions where specific type of helper T cells were predominantly activated. These were called Th1 versus those who were vaccinated with a cell repertussis vaccine against the whooping cough. They were, their reaction was, was both Th1 and Th2 helper T cells. So more different type of immunological response. So that gives us some clues, but I did make a video as to potentially why we're seeing this, so check that out as well. And the last thing that I mentioned is what I thought was really neat. The authors, of course, were also talking about, uh, talking about um, why, why, are, why could we be obs observing this? So clearly they're mentioning is that if you're seeing these IgG4 antibodies, especially when you when there's an increase, you clearly must be stimulating the B cells to continue producing, continue pr producing IgG4s, right? So there's, so they think that that is a factor that you having continuous antigen presentation, including in a germinal centers. And that's potentially maybe reason why. The, the reason why this might be observed with mRNA vaccines is because mRNA vaccines had so much antigen that there was, there was as a consequence, over-presentation of this antigen to the immune system. They're, mentioning, they're also mentioning there could be different cytokines uh, taking, taking place, so different cytokines activating different arms of the immune system, just as I mentioned a moment bef uh, before with uh, the pertussis vaccinations. And, um, but uh, overall, um, still completely new funding. All right, I better wrap it up here. <laughs> so this is not too, too long. That's all I have. Uh, and I just want to say a quick thank you uh, for your support. Please share the video. Obviously, that's a big one. Uh, and remember, I have a video that talks about what can you do obviously if you've been va mrna vaccinated and you don't think you've been infected first maybe you could be checking out your igg4 antibodies i have a video talking about how you could potentially be dealing with that afterwards so check that out um, subscribe to the channel leave a comment let me know what you think um, this is starting to be looking real and uh, we try to obviously answer as many co of these comments as, as we can but it's not easy there's a lot of them uh, and also finally check out our, our patreon account as well and we also have a new account all right folks i look forward to seeing you in a future installment bye everyone ciao